Welcome. I hope you're blessed in the Lord today. We've been going through Acts chapter 15, and we're going to continue to look at particularly verse 10. Now, we've already worked up in the context of this, so if you haven't watched any of the videos up till now, I encourage you to go back and see those previous videos. I'll try to put a link up here, uh, maybe to the first video, so that you can kind of watch, watch in order. But here, in verse 10, this is Peter making his argument that they don't need to require the uh, the Gentile disciples to keep the law of Moses to be circumcised because he says in verse 10, Now then, why test God by putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? And so this was a yoke because throughout the history of Israel, the people of Israel were not able to keep the law, but they kept coming under judgment because they had not yet received the Spirit of God. And so they were walking under the judgment and the curse, which is part of the law. There's no way to remove that curse, which is in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26, out of the law. If you have the law, you also have the curse. And so they were continually under judgment because of that law or because of that curse that was in the law. So this was a yoke that they were not able to bear. Neither, neither him nor his fathers were able to bear it. And so they said, don't make the Gentiles come under this yoke. But I want to see a contrast because if we're not under the yoke of keeping the law of Moses, being circumcised, joining the old covenant, are we just free with no yoke? No, indeed, we have a yoke. And Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me all who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus is telling us that there is a yoke. It's the yoke with him, that we are submit to him as Lord, no longer to the law of Moses as our master, but Jesus Christ, the living and risen Lord, is our master. As we saw in Romans chapter 7, that we are no longer, we are dead to the law through Jesus Christ so that we could be married to another, to him who is raised from the dead, so that we could bear fruit to God. So we are married to Jesus Christ, we are clinging to him, we abide in him, and through that we obey his, or we take upon his yoke, which is easy, and his burden, which is light. And I want us to note what he's kind of contrasting here. Because the passage goes on after he says, come to me and find rest, come to me and find Sabbath. Then he goes on and there's conflict between him and the Pharisees and his disciples about the Sabbath. Now, it doesn't, you know, in, we know that there's no uh, chapter separation. So right after verse 30, it goes into uh, chapter 12, verse 1. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck the heads of grain to eat. But the Pharisees saw it, and they said, Look, your disciples are doing what is which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. So many will say, especially in the Hebraic Roots Movement or Torah Observant uh, Movement, they will say, Look, uh, this is not, they weren't breaking the Sabbath. They were just breaking the rules that the Pharisees had made about the Sabbath. But we know that's not true from the context. But first of all, he says, they didn't say you're breaking the tradition of the elders. When they mention traditions, they talk about the traditions. But here, they say well, it's not lawful to do on the Sabbath. And Jesus agrees with them because he goes on and says this. Here is his argument. But he said to them, have you not read what David and those who were with him did when he was hungry, how he entered the house of God and ate the ritual bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for those who were with him, but only for the priests. So he says, look, David also did something lawful, but it was permitted for him. Even though it was against the law, he did something unlawful. So he's not defending the disciples and saying, no, what they did is according to the law. He's saying, okay, it's against the law. Well, David also broke the law, but he was not guilty. And then verse 5, Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests of the, in the temple profane the Sabbath, but are blameless? So he says, the, the priest profaned the Sabbath, just like my disciples have profaned the Sabbath, but they are blameless, and my disciples are also blameless. So he says, I say to you, in this place there is one who is greater than the temple. This is why they are blameless, because one that is greater than David and one is the greater than the temple is there. And so because they are following and serving him, then they are not under that uh, the, the the law of the Sabbath of the Old Testament. They are blameless even though they're breaking it. You say, but it can't be because they were living under the Sabbath, they were doing that, but they were breaking the law. And remember, Matthew is writing his gospel later after they have the full understanding of what Jesus Christ has wrought through uh, his salvation on the cross and resurrection. And so he's writing back and telling them, look, Jesus is our Sabbath. This was written to Christians. 
This was written to disciples after the resurrection of Christ. And he's writing to them and he's reminding them, look, Jesus said he is our Sabbath and we're supposed to take his yoke. And then he reminds them of this scene where they had actually broken the Sabbath and Jesus defends them, not by saying, oh, they didn't break it, but by saying, yeah, they broke it, but they're with me. So it is okay because they take my yoke upon them because they have my yoke and they're following me and I am the Lord of the Sabbath. As he goes on to say, verse uh, in verse eight, for the son of man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And so we say, okay, so Jesus is saying if we take his yoke, then that means we're no longer under at least some of the rules of the old covenant like Sabbath. Now, he also says in verse seven, if you had known what this meant, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. What is he referring to here? He's referring to the fact that even in the old covenant, if people went and offered their sacrifices and did the festivals and did all the things that you're supposed to do on the outward, but their heart was far from God, they had no mercy towards other, they had no justice, they had no righteousness inside their hearts, but they were just doing the outward things, that's not what God requires. In fact, God would condemn them for doing those things. Even though he commanded them to do them, but to God, that wasn't the main point. That wasn't the heart of the law. The heart of the law was mercy. So he says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the innocent. They were innocent because what they were doing was to meet their needs and it was something to refresh and to help them. So they weren't sinning against God. They were following Jesus. And as they followed Jesus, they grabbed some uh, grains of wheat and they began to eat them against the Sabbath but innocent because Jesus is Lord even of the Sabbath. And it goes on in verse nine, and then it begins to talk about uh, when he had departed from there, he went into their synagogue and there was a man who had a withered hand. They asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath that they might accuse him? He said to them, what man is there among you who has one sheep? If it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will he not lay hold of it? Then how much better is a man than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And here's the point. What is Jesus' yoke? What is Jesus' command about the Sabbath? That we should do good on the Sabbath. Well, aren't we supposed to be doing good every day? Yes, we're supposed to do good every day. So for the Christian, whether it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we have the same law that we are to do good. And what does that, that law look like? That we desire mercy. That we walk according to mercy, righteousness, justice, not according just outward uh, things that were given to the people of Israel. Sabbath was given as a sign to the nation of Israel. It was a sign of a, the old covenant with them. But that's not what we're under. We're under the yoke of Jesus Christ, that his yoke is easy and his load is light. And so we're supposed to follow up after that. So we see even in Jesus' teaching, we understand that we are not under the yoke of bondage, the yoke that says that we are supposed to be circumcised and to keep the law of Moses, that we're supposed to go under the old covenant. So when we flip back here to... Acts chapter 15, we're able to understand why would uh, Paul or Peter use such language about obeying the commands of Moses, about obeying the old covenant law. Now then, why test God by putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? Okay, the video is getting a bit long, so I'll go ahead and call it quits here. So in the next video, God willing, we'll jump in to continue to ask the question, okay, if we're not under the yoke of the old covenant law, then what yoke are we under? Yes, it's the yoke of Christ, but what does that look like? And we'll look at, uh, particularly in Galatians chapter 5 and uh, in some of Jesus' teaching to find out what is that law, what is that yoke that we are now under since we are no longer commanded to be circumcised and to keep the law of Moses. Hope this has been helpful to you. God bless.